let's just be real. When it's time to help a customer and they hit you with that objection, many times that leaves a lot of salespeople looking like a deer in headlights and they just stuck. Or sometimes they hit us with an objection and it catches us so off guard that salespeople end up saying something and shooting themselves in the foot and saying, nice shot. Or doing something or saying something that caused the customer to leave or not be satisfied, whatever it is. So what this video is, this video will help you increase your confidence. It'll help boost your confidence and give you a, a, a short guide on how to handle objections or how you should be handling objections. And real quick. If you're one of these people that's looking for the magic answer in 60 seconds, you might as well click off. If you're one of these folks that are under the illusion that you truly believe that somehow you can be successful in business, in sales, and in life, and you can do that in a two-minute video clip, you might as well click off and leave. And if you've still fallen for the BS that's being promoted by other people that somehow in life you can get something for nothing, you might as well click off and leave. Who this video is for? It's for those who realize, man, I've always looked at the grass being greener on the other side, but they realize the grass is greenest where I take care of it, where I water it, and where I provide it the proper nourishment. That's what this is about. This is for those who are looking to take their ability, their skill set, and their sales to another level and realize it will require a little effort on your part. I've done all the hard work and heavy lifting for you. All you have to do is if you listen to this video and embrace the ideology that I'm sharing with you on how to handle this, Watch how much easier there be. So let's get into it, okay? So this is all about handling those objections. Let's just be real about objections. If you really think about it, there's really only five. The price is too high. I'm going to think about it, speak to my spouse. I want to shop around, and I want more for my, you know, not enough money for the trade. Those are typically the five. Now, you may have one or two or a couple other ones that, you know, you can think of that you've gotten. But if you really think about it, they typically fall up under one of those, okay? so. What do we do when somebody tells us that the price is too high? First thing most salespeople want to do is they immediately want to, yeah, and start talking and just throw them away. Well, the price is so high because, or, you know, the price is too high, and act like they get offended as if they set the price or as if they own that vehicle. No, it's a partnership between you and that guest. And the difference is they don't need you. They can go to any other dealership in the city, in the state, in the country they want, but you do need them because. It's no guarantee how many more customers you're going to get that day, that week, that month. Now, of course, you expect to get some, but you have to first acknowledge it's a partnership. When salespeople say, yeah, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to close them hard, that salesperson won't be able to close the door because their intentions are wrong. It's not about going out there to close the deal. It's about going out there to make an introduction, getting their name, and then finding out you know, what brought them in, and then getting them to a spot where you can sit down and have a conversation without all types of things. Um, you know, having an impact, distractions, as we would call them. And then it is asking the right questions, listening with the intent to understand, to be a solution provider or problem solver. When salespeople look at customers as buyers that are liars or like some type of adversary, that is a mistake. They're not your enemy. They're actually your partner. Because when you, are, when you operate with your customer in a synergistic way, you create synergy. That means you both win. They get the opportunity to get the vehicle that they wanted, that they needed, or that they can afford. And you get the opportunity to have another satisfied customer and you have some ducats on your check. So let's get into it. The customer says the price is too high. Most salespeople want to just start throwing stuff out there talking. When in true, them saying the price is too high, that has different chambers in it. So the first thing you want to do when they say the price is too high identify what about the price do I, okay, well, I hear what you're saying. So tell me, what is it about the price in particular or specifically that you feel is too high? They may tell you it's the monthly payment. They might tell you it's the out the door. Heck, they might even just tell you that taxes or doc fees. You have no idea what price they're talking about specifically, but we just assume it's the overall price of the vehicle. Don't assume. You know what assuming does, makes an ASS out of you and me. So don't assume, ask. The mistake that salespeople make is they try to be mind readers. I mean, man, listen, I, I'm, I'm my wife right now, as well as I believe I know her, there are things she says and does that I wouldn't have thought of that in my head. Or there might be some days that she's sitting up and if I just guess what she's thinking, I'd be wrong. And this is somebody who I live with, who I'm in love with and who I know. So imagine a complete stranger who we've never met before. We have no idea how their mind works. We have no idea what their thought processes are. So why guess? Ask, okay, well, what is it specifically about the price that you feel is too high? 
and then allow them to speak. And then, you know, if they give you another, let's say they want to shop around. Okay, great. I hear you. Uh, what exactly are you shopping around for? Find out what's going on. Okay. If they say, I want to speak to my spouse. Awesome. Uh, what type of questions do you feel like they'll have for you? What type of information do you feel like would be important to them? Oh, I want more. I thought I was going to get more money for my, for my trade. Okay. Exactly how much were you feeling that your trade was worth? And whatever other one, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, the goal is to make sure that we're asking a question before we just start making statements. And a lot of people struggle on that. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to take a break real quick. And I want to talk about something and share something with you real fast. Just in the event, if you've been somebody that has, um, how can I say, struggle with, uh, with being able to handle objections and close deals, and you've been looking for a way for you to be able to fix it, I highly encourage you to check out the Selling for Success training platform. It has all of the courses that I've created, the audio books, the e-books, the complete courses with video, audio, training manuals, all of that. It's really simple. All you have to do is go to selling the number four success.org. Selling number four success.org. All right. So I wanted to real quick make sure that you are familiar with that. Any event that objections is something you're struggling with, there is a resource. Go to selling for success.org and everything you need to be able to help out with that. Uh, with closing deals, with advertising on Facebook, all types of other stuff. But I just wanted to make sure I got that in there. So when you're dealing with these customer objections, the first thing you want to do is you want to listen and let it di di digest it. And then as opposed to making statements, ask a question to dig further into what may be going on with them. You know, why do you feel that way? Uh, what makes you feel like that? Uh, tell me a little bit more about what you found out. Help me understand better what it is you're looking for. Um, help me by explaining exactly what it is about this that has you feeling like this. These are what we call opening questions. And the reason why they're opening questions because they, in, they encourage and enforce the customer to have dialogue with us. A closed-in question is one where the only answer is yes or no. And the reason why it's called closed is because if we ask, hey, does this look good to you? Yep, conversation done. Do you like this? No, it's done. When in sales, we have to have, the more information we have, the better and easier it is for us to be able to specifically target and help our guests find what it is they're looking for. And that's extremely important. We have to decipher the difference between statements and questions. Remember some always say good salespeople practice what to say, while the great ones practice what to ask. So make sure when somebody's giving you an objection, as opposed to just throwing out, throwing out something to say, and as, yeah, this is a guide because it's going to help you make it easier. Don't be so focused on what you should say. What should you ask next? How can you ask a question to dig deeper? And within the platform that I was sharing with you about, there's a complete course that takes you through how to handle all of these objections and they have the word tracks with them to be able to help you. At the end of the day, the most important thing to remember when you're handling objections is this. An objection is not a rejection. An objection is actually an interest in purchasing because whatever it is that has them thinking, oh, maybe I don't want to do that. You wouldn't feel like you didn't want to do it unless at one point you felt like you did. So don't look at an objection as a rejection. Sometimes a customer just throws it out there because most salespeople are so weak that as soon as they hear an objection, oh, OK, well, they'll give up. And so and, and sometimes an objection is their best way to be able to articulate to you what's going on in their mind because they don't know the words. You know, everybody doesn't know the right word to actually describe what they're thinking. So they'll use the words or the phrases that they're most familiar with and hopes that that can convey what it is that they're that they're trying to communicate with you. But when somebody tells you the price is too high, they want to speak to their spouse, they want to think about it, they want to shop around, or they want more money, they feel like they should get more money for their trade. Write down what they said, never fight, and then get them to expand on it, to elaborate on it. Okay, really tell me what is it about the price specifically that you feel is too high? Oh, you want to speak to your significant other? I totally respect that. Uh, what type of things do you feel they will want to know from you? What information do you feel like will be helpful for you explaining to them? I want to shop around. Man, I, I hear you there. What exactly are you shopping around looking for? I want more for my trade. Okay. How much did you feel your trade was actually worth? These are all I want to think about. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. 
Um, what are some of the things that you're molding around and that you're considering when it comes to this vehicle? Find out what's going on because the hardest target to hit is the one you don't know what a bullseye is. And so as opposed to guessing, throwing guess darts, why don't we ask the question, let them expand the bullseye so when we throw the dart, we have a much higher chance of hitting it. So when somebody gives you an objection, as opposed to taking it offensive and thinking that, that the sale is over, it's not. The game is just actually getting started. This is where you actually get a chance to prove your work as a sales professional, is identifying, okay, what is the concern that they're having and why? And then what can I do to fix that or make it easier for them? If you can learn how to ask the right questions, listen when you intend to understand, and then present from a place of a solution provider or a problem solver, watch how much more effective and more successful you're going to be in your sales dealing with your customers. So this, and if you haven't already, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel. And you see, I don't do cash apps. I don't, I don't even monetize my channel because it's more important for me to give the information to you. I do business all around the country and I, I want to give this to you, but your help is appreciated. So by hitting that like button, it's like digital currency. It helps the video be expanded and shown to other people. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell. So when I put up other videos that are got a lot dropping this week, you'll be notified and you won't miss out. Other than that, Post a comment if you know of any objections that I may have missed or if you have one that you uh, need some help with. Leave it in the comments. Other than that, I'm Brian Maxwell. Thank you for watching. and I look forward to seeing you at the dealership. And make sure you visit sellingforsuccess.org. I assure you, you'll be happy that you did. Over and out.